It's time to take your relationship with money past the place of uncertainty and complexity through the challenging transitions to that good place where your money is doing exactly what you want for your life. This is Getting There, the Financial Good Place podcast with Esther Sabo, CFP, and Eric Shea, CFA, from Gates Pass Advisors. Esther and Eric guide you to the good place of financial fulfillment and security. Are you ready to get there? Hello and welcome to Getting There with Esther Sabo from Gates Pass Advisors. For those that listened to the last podcast, you already know that we have a return guest today and that is Leela Meinke. Esther, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk with Leela some more about our topic today. We, we talked about it earlier in the week and literally we could talk for so long together about this. We get so excited. So I'm really looking forward to today's recording. Yeah, you guys had such a great time, and then I ruined it. I said, look, we're out of time. Come on, let's go. And so <laughs> you said, let's do two podcasts, and you are. And so Leela is back. I'm just going to sit back and learn some more from both of you. So thank you, Eric. I'm going to start by introducing Leela. For those who didn't hear the first one, I do encourage you to go back and review it. But in the meantime, Leela is the founder of Serenity Cards and Coaching. She brings a unique integration of both structure and and creativity in her coaching approach. She provides performance and resilience coaching using Clifton Strengths, and she also serves as a stamping up rep and creativity coach for card makers. With over 30 years of corporate and entrepreneurial experience, plus certifications as an ASQ Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, to a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, to her most recently earned certificate as a Life Coaching Institute Purpose Coach, Plus, multiple more. Leela has a proven track record for sharing about our topic today. Hi, Leela. How are you doing today? Hi, Esther. I'm doing great. I'm super excited. (laughs) Well, let's do a recap first of the things we talked about last time. This overall uh, podcast series, this two, is all about goals and setting goals because we're recording this in the month of January. And by now there's been some recovery from the holiday season. And it's typical that, that people start thinking about goals, resolutions, all of that for the upcoming year. And I know, as I mentioned last time, that as financial advisors, we talk a lot about supporting our clients with goal setting. And I have noticed over the years, it's really hard for beyond saying, well, I'd like to retire, I'd like to put my child through college or children, I'd like to travel more. It's very hard to articulate goals. And we started last time with a review of these Clifton strengths and the four domains and how they provide a great context for knowing that we're not all cookie cutter when it comes to these things. Leela, can you just remind us what the Clifton strengths are? Absolutely. We aren't all cookie cutter. We all approach goals in a unique way, ways that each person individually thinks, feels, and behaves. And every single different person, of course, thinks, feels, and behaves differently, they're going to have that connection in their way. So Clifton Strengths is a is an assessment. It's a methodology. It's a very scientific approach to classifying ways that people think, feel, and behave into 34 themes, 34 strengths. Those are further clustered into four kind of high level. And we talked about those four high levels. So people at a general level, either love to do, they love to get things done from the execution domain. People love to influence, love to get others inspired, get others excited, get others activated through the influencing domain. People love to connect with each other through the relationship building domain. And or people love to do some strategic thinking and think about what they're going to do before they go ahead and do it or any combination thereof. So it sounds like reviewing all of those, it's like, well, shoot, we should all have a great motivation for achieving goals. So what are the things that get in the way? And we'll be talking about five of these things that uh, are themes in a way of what gets in the way of setting, achieving, obtaining goals. So the first one we're going to talk about is we weren't necessarily taught to set goals. Maybe our parents 
didn't role model them. I know mine didn't. There was nothing of that discussion. I know there was a vague thought about, well, you will all go to college. But other than that, there wasn't much about how do you do that? What, how do you pick a school? What are, you know, how do you foster your skills and talents? And that creates, and it may be habits that came out of that background that get in our way. So Leela, how do you address that in terms of role modeling and setting habits? Sure. So the first thing I would say is it is never, ever too late to, to get a new role model. It's never <laughs> too late. So if we've had, if we've had modeling that really modeled for us, gosh, I don't want to do that. That's great data. And then if we have people that we can think of that we do want to follow, it's never too late to sign up for a program or to follow a new way. So every single one of us could probably sit here and think, gosh, I love the way X goes about things, right? So we can, we can absolutely move from, I think, a place of, I don't want to say victimhood, but a place of, gosh, I didn't have that to an empowered place of, gosh, I want this. Let me head there. So I really appreciate that Leela, that perspective, because it's a way of shifting it from, oh, gosh, I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at considering goals in the future. It's just because I don't have a good model or a good way to approach going after what it is I'd really like to have. Absolutely. And Esther, when I think of this, I think truly you're my poster child for this example right here of we know each other outside of here. We have a friendship and a relationship outside of here. So I know you maybe weren't raised with a lot of financial aptitude and financial skills. And you've really, really like harnessed just your inner clarity and your inner goal and your inner purpose to turn that around and then and and harness that energy and serve others. And so I'd like to ask you about, I mean, you're you are a poster child for for not having maybe the perfect role model. Is that? Do you not want me to say poster child? No, nope, you are. It's fine. It makes me laugh. <laughs> you are. You the are idea of me on a poster. <laughs> so you are. Makes me laugh. You are the poster child for not having that modeling and harnessing that incredibly. I'm, c- can you speak to this? Well, gosh, you're turning the tables on me. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to. It's. It's true. Those who've listened to the podcast know me. I, I grew up with a lot of financial instability. It was, it was quite, and it got incredibly extensive and very, very difficult. By the time I left home at 17, my parents were, in essence, became homeless. They were taken in and gradually recovered in various ways from that. But it was a long growing up of, of gradually that happening. And you know where it came from? I would say one of the one of the biggest things was I listened to when I was first growing my practice years ago in the early, boy, it was late nineties, early two thousands. And I listened to a course, a class about how do you attract clients? And one of the things it asked was, are you attracting clients who push you about your fees? And I thought, well, sure. And they said, are you somebody who really searches for a bargain. And I'm like, sure, I always search for a bargain. But then I realized, where am I not worrying about how much I'm paying? And it was my business coach. It was somebody else who was teaching me how to approach business, my life, how I manage the day-to-day and my to-dos without them overwhelming me. And I thought, you know what? That is worth so much its cost because of what it saves me on the other side. So that had started me really on a whole trajectory of you bring on people to fill the gaps in knowledge and understanding and then follow their suggestions. I would really say, Leela, it came from just learning how other people do this. Thank you. And and you and I both have talked about just loving coaches, whether we want coaches for better eating or coaches for better health or coaches for better finances or better business mindset. Everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs at least one coach. And so, of course, that's how you did it, because of course that is. It's beautiful. 
Yeah, and it's, you know, I noticed with my, uh, and I kind of curtailed that response because that could be a whole other podcast, but it is so much about when what I saw was taking different actions produce different results that helped give me an experience that I wanted, mm. whether it's financial security, day-to-day -day security, and I just really never wanted to go back to what I experienced from basically ages eight to 17. Um, mm. Never wanted that again. So just being connected and looking for people who could help uh, explain this and support me just has been a great, great gift. And one of the things I've noticed, we talked a little bit before about habits and habits that need to be that aren't serving us anymore. They may have served us or served me when I was eight years old. It served me to go out and say, okay, I have to find some work here and I have to work to address this to not always having to go out and solve the problem, to have other people help me solve the problem. And I've noticed that my clients have a certain habit that I relate to. I wonder why I, you know, we all attract people <laughs> who are similar to us, this habit of anxiety where when we want to push into another area of our lives, like when I was excited to start a new business, but I had been encouraged to do it for at least 10, 12 years before I actually did it, because all I could see was what could go wrong. And that came from that place of anxiety, I'd better not do it. How do you encourage and address, you know, given the themes and the domains, overcoming negative thinking habits? Sure. And many, many, many of us have them and work through them. I think it takes awareness. I think it takes, first of all, le learning the way that we think. So we've talked about one of the four domains in the is strategic thinking. There's a lot of different ways we can think. Some of us can think toward the future. Some of us can think toward the past. There's a lot of different ways we think. And so in coaching, when I work with people with strengths, we really understand the strength in depth. And then we talk about thought patterns. So it's really self-awareness. And, and even more than that, it's the willingness to be aware. And it's the willingness to slow down. Really what's happening is we want to change our neural pathways. And without making this a whole scientific discussion, our, our brains are wired to go down a certain path. Like they're just wired to, I don't know, I'm thinking of a cassette tape. Does that date me? But they're just like press play, <laughs> <laughs> press play, and off it goes, right? And so if we can, if we can start to be aware of what those tapes are that we play, and get some perspective from the outside because we don't even know what those tapes are that we're playing and have a willingness to to do some new thinking. So maybe I'm going to do an affirmation. Maybe I'm going to just say an affirmation every day. I'm going to put just kind of yellow stickies by my computer. Those are, I mean, I'm saying I, but when I work with my clients, that's a lot of the work that we do. That's a lot of the work that we do. Yeah, just changing that. It's funny you saying about the sticky. I will tell you, my, my business coach that I referenced a little bit ago, he hates stickies around the computer. <laughs> I think it's his, his neatness. But I have a few stickies on my computer. And one of the habits that I've been working a lot on breaking over the past year, year and a half, two years, uh, especially as I've gotten really uh, strong people on staff here, is that I don't need to have my hand in everything. I don't have to watch every detail across every T, dot every I. And in fact, my doing that is not healthy for the company because that's not what my clients are paying for in terms of the time. And I have a sticky on my computer because I have that goal. My goal is, and it continues, it's not a brand new one for 2022, but it is a goal to continue to focus on bringing my best to Gates Pass advisors, encouraging my clients to attain their best, as well as the employees. And with that, my, I have a sticky that says, are you doing exactly what you need to be doing right now? <laughs> and I need to be reminded of that because it can be so alluring to go to our, 
um, old habits, especially when for me, if I'm tired or if I'm stressed and I really just need a break, but the break that I choose might be like, okay, let me go check this box or that box rather than getting outside, taking a fresh air break and refreshing my mind. Nice. One more note on, on this guy is it. So when people naturally think, feel and behave the way that they're inclined to, if a yellow sticky doesn't work for someone, then let's not have that. I worked with a client one time who was a business analyst. He flow charted his anger. He flow charted what were the triggers? What did he do? And he printed out a little piece of that and he when he went in he just a tiny little graphic and when he went into environments that were more inclined to trigger him he would just look at that and remember gosh I don't want to go down that path I want to go down that path and so so I think it really what excites us like what what is going to capture our attention and so it, it's a very personal process but it can be I mean he truly he doesn't have the same anger that he did before. I've gotten testimonials like um, when we when we have the willingness, the humility, the awareness, when we take a look at our strengths and the way we're thinking and, and we have the intention to bring kindness and bring love or not anger, um, we can do it. We can do it. And the final thing I'll say, I guess, on, on procrastination, you know, we want to be perfect. We want to like we want to go from if it was a goal of being less triggered and being less angry if we want to go from go from being that state to like zero like it's Mm going to take time it's going to take it so start small have a little success build on that lose your focus come back to center start small build a little bit build a little bit yeah and i i really appreciate that that's one of the benefits of having a a coach or a role model to say gosh how do i approach this and to give it perspective i love that story what what, what did the testimonials say you said he got testimonials um oh, how gosh. did you see them oh gosh i periodically i would just check in to say let's do a review and let's and which is super helpful for clients to take a look at where they are. Um, So either over audio or in writing, I have one, I can't put my fingers on it right now, but it was, oh, here it is. Actually, I do have it. Thank you so much. I have trouble expressing the magnitude of what you've done for you. And my wife would stay, say the same. (laughs) That's great. And it is just, just mapping things through to overcome what is habitual patterns? Um, another one that is also very, very consistent with women that I work with in in my practice can be a lack of confidence or uh, an experience of fear about, wow, if I really went for this, what would that mean? And this doesn't mean that they're not confident women. They may show up. Uh, I mean, I know I show up confidently in a lot of areas. And then there's other areas where I go, oh, this, yeah, I will tell you, I, um, when I, as you know, when I remarried a couple of years ago, I um, had the great blessing of have adding two stepchildren into my life and my arena. But am I confident? No. (laughs) And that's been a whole practice of, gosh, these are two young, incredible women. And they already have a a wonderful mom who has taken great care of them. And my husband, who's their dad, where do I fit? I don't really fit here. Again, that's not great thinking. But I have a goal of wanting to be very connected with them. That's actually my, my number two strength is connectedness. And it's really important for me to achieve that, but my lack of confidence can kind of build a wall that I don't want. How do you help people encourage their confidence? I truly think this is my favorite thing to work with people on is to find their authentic voice and then stand in it, to know it and to stand in it. And so, Oh my gosh, let me count the ways. Like it just depends on each different person, but I I think the first thing is giving a safe space for people to verbalize like what's going on and and meeting people exactly right where they are and letting them articulate that and kind of see that for themselves. I was coaching a a woman the other day. She's an entrepreneur. She's got a small business and 
she's overwhelmed. And so she's, her words, it was kind of a state of a crisis. And throughout the course of the conversation, we got to a place a very large aha for her that she didn't expect <laughs> that she's actually going to take out of coaching into counseling. And that is fully appropriate. But I think leaving the space and asking the questions and letting the person have enough quiet time to connect to what's going on inside. And then, and always the motive, always when we peel away everything, 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 yeah, fear is a motive or frustration might be a motive, but always, always there's like a really, really good motive underneath and there's a really good why. And so it's connecting to that why and then seeing how what, so I, you brought up this example. So I'll ask you your why with your new stepdaughters. And that's a similar journey I've taken it. I've read about it. It's a similar journey. Many, many, many have taken, And there's lots of lack of confidence in every role in that relationship. But in that, in that situation, if someone were to connect to, well, stop using the word connect. If someone were to get really clear, my goal is to connect here. My goal is to connect. That's what I, that's what I'm available for. And if we think about being available for it, what does that look like? So we're not looking at results and we're not looking at, oh, did they, did they validate me or did, was there this response? Did I bring my best self for my best purpose? Yeah, exactly. And I was just talking with somebody before we got on here about that. Like, where do my, where does my concerns about what others are thinking get in the way? And what it does is it doesn't allow me to bring my best self in and just letting that go and just saying thank you for this opportunity to connect with them, to talk with each of them, learn more about each of them. They're just, uh, it's just a really great gift in my life. And that, that it just comes with practice. You know, you talked a lot about um, it takes time. You talked about, you know, things go slow. And I think in this age and time where things happen so quickly, we're all attached to, you know, a computer through our phones all day, every day, where somebody says, oh, yeah, who acted in that show at that time? Oh, let me just ask the phone. Brrr, and we have the answer. Oh, what's the market doing today? Brrr, okay, and we know the answer. Oh, what happened to Congress? I mean, Congress. And so we look that up. And everything is so fast that it's um, it can be undermined the sense of confidence, even when things are taking years to come to fruition. How, how do you address the impact of technology in terms of goals and confidence in achieving them. You know, in my Lean Six Sigma days, we used to say, use the tool, don't let the tool use you. Use the tool, don't let the tool use you. And that could be true for my calendar, like I could use that, or I I could use it as a, gosh, where am I headed? Or I could use it as like a, I don't know, it can um, pummel me into, is this done? Is this done? Is this done? So, right. Um, I, I, all of this is going to get back to my why and my purpose and why am I here? And, and so social media is an, a great example, comparing ourselves to others, right? We might be like, well, I want to look how that person looks like my life doesn't look like, you know, there's so, there's so many things. So what's our goal? What's our goal with social media, right? What's our goal with a technology, I love that I can connect with others. I was just on Facebook, like connecting with people I haven't spoken to in years because there was a memorial for someone who passed and it was a lovely connection. And so really technology can be amazing. I think the one thing I would say on this whole topic is balance, right? So use it for what I how it's going to serve me and then put it aside. And I guess one more note is do we have time where we just disconnect from technology? I I looked at a house one time, we didn't buy it, but it had a non-technology room. And I'm like, I want this. It was just books. And (laughs) and I could certainly put that in my own home right here, right? I don't need to go buy another house that has no technology. But (laughs) it just, it was just a lovely symbol of like unplug. Yeah. And when we unplug, it's easier to just stop and slow down Mm -hmm. and 
be reflective and move to contentment, which goes to our next obstacle, which can be, we've talked about it throughout this. I mean, it does come up in the habit, but the self-talk that we have around around goals. It could be, well, I gosh, I set this goal last year and it didn't happen, or this is always on my goals and I don't feel like I get very far. And that can be a, a damper on moving a little bit forward because of how we talk to ourselves. And I know you've shared some about this, but um, what other, you know, in terms of, even if you looked at the four domains, if someone is an influencer, let's say, in the influencing domain, where might their self-talk get in the way of them achieving good success with their goals? This is such a great question. So an influencer might have self-talk. So what does an influencer love to do? And by the way, we can all fit into any of these. It depends, like you, you, you're you not ever just in one bucket. But if your primary motive from today is coming from a place of influence, self-talk can look like, oh my gosh, I tried to get people on board to go to this place and they're not going. I must have done it wrong. It must be a horrible place to go. You know, there can be all these things going on inside. And I think in that case, it's getting back, I think, a little bit to to the confidence and the, am I available to forward a cause? Am I available to bring people with me? And then do I have conversations to say, gosh, do I need to tweak some things? Are there some things about the cause we're headed towards that need to be adjusted. The other thing an influencer might say is, okay, let's go there, let's go. But then they may not necessarily be inspired by the action or by the thought required to put a plan together. It might be just like, here's this really cool thing, let's go make it happen. But they may not have the relationships or they may not have the thinking or they may not have the execution to turn it into action. And so then, that self-talk can be, oh gosh, I'm not a good person because this isn't happening. And so here's what I want to say about all of this. We don't do things alone. Like if you're an influencer, go influence (laughs) and Mm -hmm. bring in the people, like connect with people enough that it's a cause that everybody wants to get behind. And and let the doers do and let the doer let the thinkers kind of help decide gosh here's here's some things you know here's a roadmap we could follow here's a path here's um a reasonable first goal and so i think we so much think that we have to do it alone and if there's one thing i would say about all of this is we don't do anything what's the point of having a goal we do things with people for people I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's about others. And so we don't have to do this alone. So I could, I could well, share, go, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I just, you know, it makes me think so much of the time when I'm talking with my clients, we approach their goals from um, a number of different questions. Um, one of them that um, you know, people are familiar with is, let's say you passed away tomorrow and or you're going to pass away the day after tomorrow and you spend tomorrow reflecting back on what you didn't get to accomplish so much of that is about the relationships it's about the people it's about seeing what happens with my grandchildren or my children or or it can be gosh you know what i feel very fulfilled and then the answer is great let's keep all the things up that keep you feeling fulfilled so it's Mm -hmm. so true so much of the time over and over it comes back to what supports my relationships with the people that I love. That's really, at the end of the day, the thing that's most important to me. So we're running out of time, if we haven't already, but there is one last obstacle that's really important. And just as a quick recap, what we've talked about already is an obstacle where we didn't have role modeling about setting goals, so how do we get through that? We might have um, a habit of anxiety that causes us to not want to move out of a comfort zone and procrastinate moving forward towards a goal. We may have a lack of confidence or have fear, and our self-talk can prohibit us from moving forward with our goals. And the last one is, and this is common, I think, to people who just, you know, we're just not sure exactly what they want. People ask us, and we feel very put on the spot. So 
Leila, how do you work with with clients? What are what are how do you use the Clifton Strengths and the Four Domains to help people frame what it is that they really do want? Sure, I think one way to consider this question first is to think about it. What if we don't know our goals? What if we haven't taken the time and taken the intention to think about our goals? A couple things can happen. The impact of not knowing our goals is that we, or our intentions, or our purpose, or our why, or really where we want to head mindfully, we can either do one of two things. We can overcommit because so many opportunities come our way. We can just, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Or we can get into that stuck place. Oh gosh, I could do this or this or this or this. Which one should I focus on now, right? And so depending on what your Clifton Strengths themes are, you are going to be programmed to automatically operate out of one place. If you're an achiever, for instance, achievers love to-do lists. So they're just going to stay busy and they're going to put their to-do list in front of them and they're going to feel like temporary satisfaction, checking things off a list, checking things off a list, checking things off a list. Someone high in maybe adaptability and relationship themes might really kind of be reactive to others requests and responses and might be like oh okay let's go to that oh and then at the end of the day be like oh my gosh well I didn't get done what I wanted to get done so when we don't take the time to be thoughtful and impactful uh, uh, thoughtful about what we want to do the impact is we're going to like head somewhere that we didn't even intend to head. And depending on if you're a doer or a thinker or a relationship person, you can get stuck any number of different ways. One more thing I would say is that purpose doesn't have to be this big, huge, ginormous thing. I think one of the most amazing Mm -hmm. purposes that a person can have in life is to be a mom and be home with your little baby. Like what more important thing is there in the world than to maybe be in that moment. And so, or it could be maybe you're a mentor to others. Maybe you're retired and you've um, got some experience and you just serve as a mentor to others. You don't even measure it. You don't even know it. It's from your heart. It brings you joy. You do it. But you really, you intentionally have those times in your calendar that you allow to have that mentoring. So it doesn't have to be some big ginormous, like I'm going to go win the Olympics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. It's just like, it doesn't have to be, I'm going to solve global warming. It can be just, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be somebody who others can connect to easily. And that's a lot, you know, and I'm, as we're winding up here, thank you, Leela, so much for this, because as we've talked about all of these things, I think about the obstacles that clients have experienced. And so much of the time they're, they're more inner. And the work that we do is let's just get it all out on the table. Just get it all out on the table. And let's see what's truly an obstacle and what we can do about it and what really is just an obstacle in our mind. I, I find that people think about doing a financial plan in, and this anxiety comes up that, okay, well, this means that I won't have <laughs> any more fun anymore. This person is going to make me just eat bean sandwiches and mm. not take any fun vacations so that I can be responsible. Or, or the other is, oh, I'm going to see things there that I'm, I'm too scared to see, that it's, it's, it's not comfortable for, for me, or they're going to make me do something, or they're going to make me change my investments or something like that. And so much of we do is let's just look at perspective. Let's just look at where you're headed. Is that where you want to? Does that meet your why, your own why of what I'm doing here? Whether it's relationships, being present, being of service in our community, is everything aligning so that you can do your best at that? So thank you so much, Leela, for all you shared. And I know you you have a lot of, you have available resources for people if they want to delve into this more deeply with you. Can you share us what, with us what those are and how to connect with you? Sure. If you go to leelamikey.com and we'll make this URL available to you, you can see my um, products and services. And I've um, written a, a brief article for today, leelamikey.com forward slash on dash goals. We'll make that um, available to you. But in it, I share 
I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have workshops. If you want to do this Clifton Strengths assessment, I have codes available. I do vision board classes, so we didn't even get to talk a lot about doing vision boards. I have a monthly coaching newsletter, and I actually have a workshop every month that is about building creative intentions. And we pick a word for the year, and we just we do different journaling, reflective workshop discussion exercises to just connect over the course of a year slowly to the intentions we want to build. Thank you again so much, Leela. You have so much to offer. I know that everyone listening uh, can hear that too as well. And if you'd like to connect with me in terms of your personal financial planning and seeing where you are, talking about where you'd like to go and making those two come together, I invite you to give me a call and connect with me. Best is my website, gatespassadvisors.com. Contact me. And we look forward to picking this up again. We'll probably circle back, Leela, mid-year and see how people are doing. Is that okay with you? All right. Sounds good. All right. This, this has been fantastic. Esther, Leela, and I would never make you eat bean sandwiches. I'm just, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if I've ever heard of bean sandwiches, but black bean, black bean sandwiches might be pretty good. Anyway, with toast. There you go. All right. Well, Leela, thank you again so much for being here. I always learn so much and I just love your passion and your heart. Um, obviously, this is why you and Esther are dear, dear friends because you, you have very much the same heart for people. So thank you so much for being here. And of course, Esther, thank you for having her back on the show. And our last thank you is always reserved for you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Getting There podcast with Esther Sabo. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Esther comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Gates Pass Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. Thank you for listening to Getting There, the Financial Good Place podcast. Be sure to follow the podcast on your favorite listening platform to be notified as soon as we release a new episode. Check out the website at www.gatespassadvisors.com for more information. The content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The information in this material is not intended as tax or legal advice. Please consult legal or tax professionals for specific information regarding your individual situation. The opinions expressed in material provided are for general information and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security.